Hello from Who Died Today America, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Number 8. Camar de los Reyes, the talented Puerto Rican actor renowned for his role as Antonio Vega on the ABC soap opera One Life to Live, passed away on December 24th at the age of 56 after a battle with cancer. Born in San Juan, Puerto Rico to a Cuban percussionist father, Walfredo de los Reyes, and a Puerto Rican mother, Matilda Pages, de los Reyes grew up in Las Vegas, Nevada. De Los Reyes's acting career was marked by diverse and impactful roles. He gained prominence for his portrayal of Pedro Roadman Quinn, a Chicano boxer in the 1994 theatrical production of Blade to the Heat, where his performance was highly praised by critics. He also appeared alongside Patrick Stewart in a 1995 production of William Shakespeare's The Tempest. Further showcasing his versatility, De Los Reyes starred in Oliver Stone's biopic Nixon in 1995 and voiced the main antagonist Raul Menendez in the popular video game Call of Duty Black Ops 2 in 2012. His career also included memorable roles in TV series like Sleepy Hollow, where he played the demon Job and The Rookie, in addition to guest appearances on shows like Law & Order and CSI Miami. De Los Reyes was also featured in Tony Braxton's music video for Spanish Guitar. Camar De Los Reyes was not just an actor but a family man. He married actress Sherry Salm in 2007, with whom he had twin boys, and he had another son from a previous relationship. His brothers, Walfredo Reyes Jr. and Daniel De Los Reyes, are also noted percussionists. De Los Reyes's passing marks the loss of a dynamic and beloved figure in the world of entertainment remembered for his profound contributions to both television and theater. Number 7. Tom Smothers, the famed American comedian, actor, composer, and musician, passed away at the age of 86 on December 26 due to stage 2 lung cancer. Best known as one half of the Smothers brothers with his younger brother Dick, Tom Smothers carved a unique niche in entertainment history with their popular 1960s comedy and variety shows, the Smothers Brothers Show, and The Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour. Born on February 2, 1937, at Fort J. Army Post Hospital in New York City, Tom was the son of Ruth, a homemaker, and Major Thomas B. Smothers, a U.S. Army officer who died as a POW in 1945. Tom excelled as a competitive unicyclist and gymnast, and later pursued studies at San Jose State University. The Smothers Brothers initially aspired to be folk musicians, but found their calling in comedy, blending music with humorous dialogues. Tom's unique comedic style was integral to their act's success. He also had a notable solo career, contributing to John Lennon's iconic song, Give Peace a Chance, and participating in events like the Monterey Pop Festival. Tom's political activism was evident in his work, especially in The Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour, which faced censorship battles due to its socio-political content. This activism extended to his personal life, where he was known for his strong political opinions and advocacy. In addition to his comedic achievements, Tom was a successful vintner, establishing Remick Ridge Vineyards in Sonoma County. He leaves behind a legacy as a groundbreaking comedian, a passionate advocate for freedom of speech, and a beloved family man. Number 6. Carl's Falcon, a skilled Spanish motorbike rider, tragically died at the age of 45 due to injuries from a crash during the Dakar rally. Falcon's accident occurred more than a week before his death during the second stage of the race in Saudi Arabia. Despite immediate medical attention and airlifting to a hospital, he succumbed to irreversible neurological damage. The Dakar rally organizers expressed deep sorrow upon learning of Falcon's passing, and extended sincere condolences to his family and friends. Falcon's team, Twin Trail Racing, shared the heartbreaking news on Instagram, remembering him as a cheerful, active person who passionately enjoyed motorbiking, 
particularly at the Dakar rally, where he finished in 2022. Falcon's life was closely intertwined with motorbikes, a passion evident from his profile shared by Twin Trail. He also had a successful career as an IT engineer and dedicated his spare time to being a motorbike instructor and tour guide. Known for his patience, energy, and joy in teaching, he left a lasting impact on many learners. His loss is profoundly felt by his family, friends, teammates, and fans. Twin Trail requested privacy for the upcoming farewell events to honor Falcon's memory. The Dakar Rally, known for its length and difficulty, serves as a testament to Falcon's dedication and skill as a rider. Number 5. Elisabeth Trissenar, the acclaimed Austrian actress, passed away at the age of 79 in Berlin, as announced by her family's attorney, Peter Raua. Born on April 13, 1944, in Vienna, Trissenar was notably recognized for her collaborations with director Rainer Werner Fassbinder in films like Berlin Alexanderplatz and The Marriage of Maria Brown. Trissenar, the daughter of a singing student and a Dutch doctor, began her acting journey at the prestigious Max Reinhardt Seminar in Vienna. It was here where she met her future husband, director Hans Neuenfels. The couple had a son, Benedict, in 1966, who later became a successful cinematographer known for The Counterfeiters. Trissenar's illustrious theater career saw her perform across various prestigious stages, including Bochum, Staatstheater Stuttgart, Schauspiel Frankfurt, the Berg Theater in Vienna, Schauspielhaus Zurich, and Schauspiel Köln. She also had significant stints at the Volksbühne Berlin from 1985 to 1990 and at the Deutsches Theater in Berlin. Renowned for her portrayal of powerful female characters, Trissenar shone in roles such as Ibsen's Nora and Hedda Gabler, Kleist's Penthesilea, Euripides' Electra, Gretchen in Goethe's Faust, Warja in Chekhov's The Cherry Orchard, Lessing's Emilia Galati, and Strindberg's Miss Julie. She also graced the Salzburg Festival multiple times as bullshaft in Everyman. In addition to her work with Fassbinder, Trissenar collaborated with other renowned directors like Doris Dory in Nobody Loves Me, Robert Van Ackeren in The Other Smile, and Agnieszka Holland in Bitter Harvest. She also worked with Michael Herbig in The Story of Brandner Casper and starred alongside David Striesau and Nadia Uhl in I've Never Been Happier. Number 4. Norm Sneed, a notable figure in American football, passed away. A skilled quarterback, Sneed played for several teams in the National Football League, including the Washington Redskins, Philadelphia Eagles, Minnesota Vikings, New York Giants, and San Francisco 49Rs. He was born in Newport News, Virginia, and showcased his athletic prowess in high school, excelling in basketball, football, and baseball. Sneed attended Wake Forest University, where he established 15 conference records in passing. His college career was marked by significant achievements, including being named second team All-ACC in 1958 and first team All-ACC in 1959 and 1960. In 1960, he also earned the honor of second team All-American. In the NFL, Sneed's career was highlighted by four Pro Bowl selections. Despite playing for teams often in slumps, his talent shone through. His tenure with the Redskins, although challenging, was notable for his perseverance and skill. Sneed's time with the Eagles was marked by both ups and downs, but he remained a key player throughout. His later career involved trades to the Vikings, Giants, and 49 ERs. While he never saw postseason action as a starter, his contributions to the teams he played for were significant. Sneed was also a trailblazer in some respects, being part of trades involving future Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Sneed's legacy in the NFL is remembered for his resilience and skill in the face of challenging team dynamics. His journey through various teams and his ability to maintain a high level of performance throughout his career make him a memorable figure in NFL history. Number 3. Mila de Jesus, a Brazilian-born influencer renowned for her significant weight loss transformation and makeup tutorials, has tragically passed away at the age of 35 due to suspected cardiac arrest. Residing in Boston and having recently become a newlywed marrying George Kauzik, 
De Jesus leaves behind a profound impact on her nearly 60,000 Instagram followers and over 100,000 YouTube subscribers. Her journey to fame began six years ago with a life-changing weight loss surgery, which she frequently reflected upon on social media, highlighting her transformation from the age of 22 to 35. Beyond her physical transformation, De Jesus bravely shared her struggles with psoriasis, a condition affecting 80% of her body, through her social media platforms, giving an insight into her battles beyond the limelight. Mila de Jesus is survived by four children from a previous marriage, who now face the heart-rending task of moving forward without their mother. Her loss has sent ripples of sorrow through her online community, with fans and fellow influencers expressing their condolences and reminiscing about her positive influence and vibrant presence. One fan, mourning her passing, mentioned being a follower since the beginning of YouTube, underscoring the length and depth of her impact. Her friend and businesswoman, Eduarda Gaia, along with her son, Pedro Marcal, have publicly shared their grief and cherished memories. In her absence, Mila de Jesus leaves a legacy of resilience, transformation, and the power of sharing one's journey with the world. Number two, Bobby Jean Carter, the sister of famous musicians Nick and Aaron Carter, tragically passed away at the age of 41 in Florida. The cause of her death is currently unclear. Known to family and friends as BJ, she was involved in the family's music business during her brother's peak careers, particularly with Aaron, for whom she worked as a wardrobe stylist and makeup artist on his tours in the early 2000s. BJ also appeared in the family's reality TV show, House of Carters, which aired on E! and featured her in eight episodes. Despite her early public life, she lived mostly out of the public eye in her later years. She struggled with addiction and substance abuse, a battle that was both documented on television and continued throughout her adulthood. Her legal troubles, including recent arrests, were also noted. Her passing is another heartbreak for the Carter family, which previously lost Aaron Carter in 2022 due to a drug-related drowning and sister Leslie Carter in 2012 from an overdose. Surviving siblings include Nick and Angel, along with half- and step-siblings. BJ leaves behind her eight-year-old daughter, Bella, who had previously lost her father and now faces the loss of her mother. The family, particularly Jane Carter, BJ's mother, requests privacy during this difficult time of grieving. Number one, Bernie Fagan, an English professional footballer renowned for his defensive skills, passed away at the age of 74 on December 30th. Born on January 29, 1949 in Sunderland, Fagan's football journey began with the youth team of his hometown before transitioning to a professional career with Northampton Town in 1969. Fagan's football career spanned various teams and leagues, notably playing non-league football with Scarborough. His venture into the United States in 1974 marked a significant shift in his career, joining the Seattle Sounders of the North American Soccer League. Throughout his time in the NASL, he played for multiple teams, including the Los Angeles Aztecs, Colorado Caribous, and the Portland Timbers. Fagan's adaptability was evident as he transitioned between teams mid-season and even delved into indoor football with the Detroit Lightning of the Major Indoor Soccer League in 1979. After retiring as a player, Fagan dedicated himself to coaching, significantly influencing the soccer landscape in the United States. He coached FC Portland in the Western Soccer Alliance from 1985 to 1988 and took the helm at Warner Pacific College. Beyond his formal coaching roles, he also ran the Bernie Fagan soccer camps, contributing to the development of young talents. Fagan's passing leaves a legacy of dedication to soccer, both on the field as a player and off the field as a coach, inspiring many in the football community.